like grading art, but it takes too long. Hi y'all, I'm Harris. I'm a CTE teacher and a designer who teaches a graphic design pathway for high schoolers in a public school setting. In this video, we're going to run through what a week looks like for me as a teacher. I've been doing this for 11 years now and with several citywide, state and national awards under my belt, I've come up with a, a series of routines that help me to balance having a life with having a career that I love. So if you're an art teacher who wants to see how other teachers are doing this, or if you're a high school student who wishes you were in a graphic design program, or hey, maybe you are even one of my current students or friends, follow along and let's see where this week takes us. We're gonna start things off with um, where I was on Monday. Um, I have a very specific schedule that I follow to um, basically just like balance out the stress that is being a teacher. And so um, every planning period that I have, I have tasks that I have to take care of. I map out all of my free time, which is the like half hour right before the bell rings with, um, you know, my planning period, if I get one of those. Um, and then the half hour I might stay behind right after the school day. I do these things and I stick to this schedule that you're going to see religiously. Um, and that is like one of the best coping strategies that I found. So yeah, here it is. Check it out. Look it over. And uh, I don't know if you have a better idea. Let me know what you think. So yeah. As you saw in the schedule, Monday is all about lesson planning. So this is me sitting at my desk right before the school bell rings. I take that little half hour and I map things out. I have two resources that I use. The first thing is I love my like notebook lesson planner. That is just where I get out all my ideas and rough things out first. So I have um, shameless plug and non-sponsored. I have a Erin Condren like lesson planner. At first I thought they were really tacky and um, I am a grown up scene kid. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also I'm like, I'm a queer teacher too. So I was just like, these are so girly. I don't know. Um, but I love that thing. Like I finally got one last year and was like, where the hell have I been all this time? So I started out there and then I go into the lesson planning website that I use. What you can see me doing right now is editing my lesson plans for the week. Um, I specifically use this website that I love. Um, you can really use anything. You can use a Google Doc. You can use, oh God, I, I know a lot of teachers who uh, typed things in Microsoft Word forever. You are killing your computer. That is so much data. Um, but I, I use this website and it's started by two teachers who used to work in the district that I work in and then they launched this website at a hackathon that I happened to be in when I was getting my master's in teaching and I saw it and was like oh oh hell yes this is for me it's um it's called common curriculum and you have like a week view but also if you get the pro version you get um, a unit planning timeline which is like the greatest thing ever um, I've been on that website since it first started, so hee hee, I got a pro plan and I didn't have to do anything. Um, so yeah, that, I, again, not a sponsored thing, it's just I love this website and um, lesson planning on it on the regular is like totally 100% free. So I do this, the next thing that I do that you're going to see is I also set up my boards for my kids, I make sure the calendar behind my head is like up to date. Okay, so here's my lesson overview board for the week. This is where I will list out for all of the students what's gonna happen each day. The board is broken up into four rows and five columns. The four rows are for each of my classes. I teach graphic design level one, two, and three, and then I also teach AP drawing. Um, then I list out basically just like a short blurb that describes what are the students going to do that day. Um, sometimes I suck and like I, I don't update it until like we're in that lesson and then I'll write it on the board. But for the most part, I try to do this. I don't find that every kid needs it, but there's definitely kids on the spectrum and other students who appreciate the structure and knowing what's going on. 
the rest of my Monday was pretty uneventful. Oh, by the way, um, this little creeper back here, there she is. That's Tombo, AKA Thomasina. And if you've seen that movie, then you know why that's her name. Cause she's orange and she definitely has nine lives. So anyway, um, Monday, we get the lesson planning out of the way. If I don't finish in that time before the bell, then I come back to it during my planning period. And I also come back to fleshing out all my lessons um, and like my slideshows and things like that. I do that right before I leave school. I don't like to hang out for a long time on Monday. I'm like, kind of like after the dismissal bell rings, I clear the hallway, I say bye to all the boo-boos. So cute. Um, and then I, I dip. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll get into Tuesday. You can see what that was like. Dudes, I forgot you need some prefacing like, okay. So like not to talk too much, but I start off my lessons in a very specific way. So Tuesday, you're going to see how that works. Um, we do this thing called class leader and I do it for a number of reasons. One, engaging the students to um, just getting them used to like some public speaking and investment in the lesson, um, really knowing what the objective of the lesson is, because otherwise, if you tell it to them, if you're like, this is what we're going to do today, they don't, they don't listen. They don't care. You're a teenager. I didn't care when I was 15 either. Like I did it, but I didn't care. So, um, we did this class leader thing and like one student comes up and we go, let's get yeah. And then they call on students to read the different parts of the lesson intro instead of me doing it. Um, I have found every time that I've done that, they're like, this is annoying. And then like they pay way more attention when their peer is up front calling on them than uh, when I do it. So I just like it. I don't know. It works. And um, yeah, so Tuesday, uh, you'll get to see like me standing behind my desk. I'm not going to film my students because um, I don't have their consent. Uh, but you can like listen in to how the lesson is going. Yeah. Great. So my lovelies, we're going to slide three. I see a lot of you on the slideshow already. Let's shout out these people. I see Valentine's on there. Corey, my iPad friends, you know that... Um, your icon does not pop up, so I might not see you on there. Sorry if you're there and I don't call your name out. Jamal, Tata, Chelsea, thank you all so much. I see Cam and Marquel. Thanks, Nehemiah. Thank you, Ty. Awesome. And thanks, Payson. Okay, lovelies. How about we welcome Payson to the front with a round of applause? Oh, nice. Cassie's back to clapping on the face. See how I adjusted my phrasing this week? Yeah, I've learned my lesson. Thank you, thank you. All right, lovelies, we're listening up. Payson's gonna call on two different people to read the announcements. Let's start off there. Who do you wanna read? There is no school on Friday for teacher professional development. Awesome, very nice, enjoy that. And no school next Monday. Yes, it's true. An extra announcement from our class leader. We love that. It is a four-day weekend. GSA has a lunch meeting on Thursday. GSA has a lunch meeting on Thursday, okay? So if you remember, make sure you come. All right, we're on to the learning targets. We just need two people this time as well, please. At this point, you're gonna see me walk away from my desk and you might have noticed I'm holding some purple raffle tickets in my hands. That is super duper intentional and like one of my favorite strategies to tell my student teachers about. Um, in this classroom, we really believe in positive reinforcement. Um, I am usually the teacher who has to call home far less than the other teachers. That is an art thing, it's cheating, I know. I am sorry if you teach science or ELA or math and have to call home every freaking day. I, I get it, okay? But also, I really like to um, do as much positive reinforcement as possible. It's just, it's easier on my life, one. But two, I, I think that is such a better motivator to the kids than like, 
I don't know. I was never the kid who cared about grades. I didn't give a crap about like, do I have a D or do I have an A? I ended up getting good grades, but it was more about the motivation of like, I am expanding my knowledge base. That's cool. So with my students, what I do is I'll walk around and as the class leader calls on them to share, I give them a raffle ticket. That raffle ticket does two things. It enters them into the semester raffle where I write to local design firms and donors and ask them if they will help donate some art supplies that the kids would really like. So we'll like, we'll do Posca markers, we'll do sketchbooks. Um, one year we had an Instex camera, that was crazy. Um, but yeah, we get some like good prizes and I might do like six kids who win per class, but it means a lot to the kids. And then later, like one of my students carries around the box of paint they got all the time. And like he lends it to his friends, they use it and like he leaves it on the counter in my room so he can go back to it. So I know the prizes mean a lot. Um, the other thing the raffle ticket does is we use a PBIS reward system at my school. It's honestly, it's just PBISrewards.com. But then those points add up that the kids get. So I use the raffle tickets to enter their names in and give them points. And then they can get like discounted tickets to the dance, ice cream socials, pizza parties, stuff like that. They can buy that with their points. So um, yeah, it's a really great system. And if you don't have a system like that in your class, give it a shot. Um, the school social worker at my school, shout out to Miss Kaplan, is actually the person who got me onto raffle tickets and said that kids really appreciate having a tangible item in their hand that shows them that they've done a good job because you can digitally like on class dojo you can mark like hey you're doing a good job and like your little monster will like you know do whatever like do a little dance or something but that's digital that's not in their hand it there's something about holding it that makes a kid go oh yeah i i did good Yes. Okay, y'all, if you don't remember what a black letter font is, look at the example on the bottom. I included one so that you don't get confused about what black letter looks like, okay? So make sure that you are using that style of font. You only need to use it for the title. Keep that in mind. If you use it for everything else, it's going to be very confusing. What program are we designing this in, people? Adobe what? Illustrator. Illustrator. This might be handy for other art teachers. I have my students do like two weeks of type challenges when they're in the first level of graphic design. And I find that that carries them a really long way to having a sophisticated uh, taste, um, just sense of style when it comes to designing deliverables in any future class. So each day they have something different they have to do like one day it's a wedding invitation, so it has to look romantic. The next day it's for a science fair, so it has to look scientific. Um, and so on this day they were designing something for the Renaissance Festival. It's Valentine's Day. Okay, so we're on to Tuesday. Tuesday is team meeting day, but as you heard, it was also Valentine's Day, so all cuteness abounds. We are excited, yes. My favorite part of Valentine's Day is um, all of the balloons and the roses and all the things given to besties given to your crush secret notes past i mm, i eat it up i cannot stand it my heart is like exploding i will be making that noise all day um i love valentine's day i love it oh my god okay i'm checking for a few more Khalil, I got yours. <laughs> I like your insert placeholder. Um, Y'all, when you're done reading your appreciations, keep your notes, but please put your bag back up.
Valentine and Kaylin, when you're done, can you walk around and see who's done with their bag and take it back to put back up? Thank you. So like, love a high schooler, but you definitely have to check to make sure they do their assignments correctly. So as you can hear, I'm sorting through their work that they're submitting as the challenge wraps up. This is my way of on the spot assessing how they did and then just also looking to see who I'll need to reteach in a different lesson. Um, it's very handy and like, you know, words of affirmation, love languages. The kids like to hear what they're doing right. So yeah, gotta do it. According to the schedule, Wednesday is grading day, and so that's what I did. I graded a bunch of things. You can watch me do it. Yeah. It's the end of the school day. I have a very strict policy on work-life balance in general, which is I don't like to take work home. I do not. Um, I learned in the pandemic that that is one of the fastest ways uh, to burn out. And um, I'm a big supporter of teachers unions and just teachers being treated well. So I don't like to take work home. Um, I also think that teachers should come to work at a reasonable time and leave at a reasonable time. And I had a mentor, literally one of the best, Susan, who used to tell me at the end of the day, she was like, did kids come in smiling? Did they leave smiling? Um, and most importantly, when you walk out, like at the end of the day, that thing will be there the next day. So you gotta leave it. So most of the time I will leave it, um, but I am scoring the portfolios of all of the very exciting and amazing kiddos who applied to get into our program next year and they're awesome their art is really cool so for once I am staying pretty late and finishing this um and it's really nice but yeah it's a long time it takes a while <music> Thursday. It's actually a four-day week for the students because we have teacher professional development tomorrow and uh, my alma mater had some cool swag in the store so you know I had to rep my school. Um, I'm a MICA graduate. I did graphic design, graduated in 2011. There we go. Yeah, my brain can work. Um, and then I got my MAT, Master of Art in Teaching, in 2012 because I did their five-year program.
And it was actually worth it. Um, that was a big decision for me when I went ahead and chose MICA, but at the time they had a 100% placement rating um, for everybody who went through their teaching program. And because I had a really awesome long-term substitute in high school who really got me, like, I already loved digital art, and then she was actually the only person on the staff at the time who could teach it, plus my already existing studio art teacher, Youngblood, love him, um, was like the freaking best. So put together, um, between those two people, I decided to go to Micah go to Micah, actually had a really good experience, and they are the reason I have the job I have now. So, shout out to Micah, yeah. I don't agree with everything they do, but they did get me to this job, and that's nice. Anyway, last night I had to go run some errands because I run a club for queer students at the school, and we are making pride flags today during lunchtime. So I got them some fabric, I got them some crafting glue, here are all their supplies. Yay. So yeah, like yesterday was a very, very long day, but worthwhile. And I actually had a really good time. Anyway, we'll see how today goes. We have some awards assemblies for the kids today to award them for all their achievements in quarter two. I have all their certificates printed out. Um, I have a lot of students who got scholastic art and writing awards. Amazing. In the past, we've only had like two kids apply per year. And then this year I went on a tirade and I was like, there's no reason at a high school for design that we don't give out, like we don't get our kids getting into the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. It doesn't make any sense. So we had like 60 kids apply this year, which is awesome. And I think like 12 or 13 got regional awards. Yes, so cool. So anyway. Um, I've got their certificates, and I'm excited to give out these awards today. It's going to be a good day. All right. Ah, here's their pride flags. They're so cute. They're not done. We're going to finish next week during lunch, but I love what they made. Okay, so we're ending the week with a professional development day. Um, it was in a very hot building, but uh, we had to put together like a set of goals for my whole CTE trade that I am a part of. And all of us identified, hey, we need equipment. So I ended up hanging out a little bit later and came up with like an order list. I don't know if anyone will do anything with it, but I sat through my second session and just listened in and put the list together. And so here's me doing that. Okay, so it's the end of the week. We made it through professional development day. Yay. It was boring. Um, those, the sessions that we have, I've definitely, I've done them before, like a lot of times, especially when you work in a school district for a long time. And if you work in a school district that's underfunded, a lot of the training is like again and again and again and again. And everybody acts like you're a year two teacher. <sighs> so when you've been doing it for over a decade, it's like, okay can we do something new but anyway it was nice to see um all my coworkers that teach the same content as me um technically my content in the state is interactive media production so i got to see all those people and we've been working together for a good few years now so it was really nice um now i'm gonna go snuggle and catch up on you i'm re-watching season two because i'm very behind and i don't want to watch the new stuff without like reminding myself of how screwed up this character is now his name's will um anyway 
I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna snuggle my cat. My fiance's out of town. It's bachelor party. Um. So it's time for cat snugs and introvert time. <laughs> See y'all in whatever the heck the next video is. Um, if you're watching this, thank you so much for checking it out. Um, if you are really interested in graphic design education and you have any ideas of like, I don't know, some things that you'd want to see or software tutorials you want me to record or projects that you wish I'd review from my curriculum. So maybe you can give it a shot in your classroom. Um, if you're a student and you want some tips and tricks and stuff like that, let me know. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to. Like if you want to. I don't know. I, I just started this thing. Okay. Bye. We call this a bonus footage. Good morning to me. I'm biking to work and up in that tree, I kept hearing squeaking and, you know, I love birds. So I was like, what the hell kind of bird makes that sound? Look up. It's raccoons. Oh my God. What? I feel like this is going to be very upsetting if I keep watching it, but that one raccoon is stuck on the tree limb and the other raccoon is trying to help it get unstuck. Oh my God. What? Oh. oh my God, they got it unstuck. Yes. Go mama raccoon. <laughs>